Hello, welcome to Billy Ho Sports, leg two of the Colonial Down Stakes this weekend for the Arlington Million. Uh, this is going to be a betting show. We're going to go over past performances for both the Beverly D and the Secretariat Stakes uh, at the Colonial Downs, as I mentioned. So that's part of the Million uh, undercard, and I've already released Arlington Million, uh, two shows on that one. So check both those out, a preview show and a betting show. And uh, we're going to get into this one today. And then in the future, I think I'll look at uh, some of the stakes over at Saratoga as far as the four-star Dave and Saratoga special. And then probably get out west for a little yellow ribbon and Sorrento stakes at Del Mar. So be on the lookout for those videos probably tomorrow, most likely. So we're going to knock these two out today and get you all set for the Arlington Million Stakes Day at Colonial Downs. So all I ask in return is please subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, leave me a comment, and uh, tell me who you like in either or of these races. Do you got a best bet? I don't know. People always put out, oh, that's my three-star bet of the day. But I, I don't typically do that kind of thing. I just try to go out and get horses and narrow the field down. If you got 10 horses like the last video, I narrowed it down to about five. So if I can knock anybody's research in half, that's all the more better. So just remember that going forward. And uh, we're going to get started right now. Okay, grade one Beverly D is a mile and uh, three sixteenths on the turf for three-year-olds. Uh, Phillies and mares. And it's on the, uh, excuse me, it's on the outer turf. Uh, our next race will actually be on the inner turf. So just keep that in mind. So this one is on the outer turf. And we're going to start with number one, Fev Rover. Uh, Mark Cassie trained, Javier Castellano rides. Uh, and the half length into third place in this Diana grade one to white beam and in Italian is tough enough for me. Uh, being just her third start on the season, I think maybe uh, is still eligible for improvement. Uh, so if that that's possible, she's a definite win contender. And the early pressing style I like. So it should have her in position down the stretch. So definite contender here. Number two in the prime power ratings. Number two, Jan's girl. Moving up in class, poor speed, uh, best speed rating, well below average. Uh, does have some good things. The high jockey percentage for Antonio uh, Gallardo, I guess, or Gallardo, Gallardo. Uh, Laura Cazares, uh having a pretty good uh, meet so far with uh, – a couple of stakes wins, so not too bad on her. And uh, this last race was a win, but it was just optional claiming. This one hasn't seen uh, any kind of stakes racing, so I'm going to pass. And now in the next one, we got uh, Romagna Mia, Grand Motion Trainer, Johnny V. John Velasquez is up. This one you don't have a whole lot because it's coming from overseas. It's coming from the France area. And uh, But I think it's going to be good. The overseas shipper has the class to compete. I believe plenty of stamina. And Grand Motion is hot lately. Johnny V is a Hall of Fame jockey. So I think this one's going to be in the mix. It's four to one morning line odds. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So we'll have that one on, on our radar as well. Uh, Miss, Miss Unseen is moving up in class as well. And pretty, pretty weak speed figures here recently but did get this win in this optional claimer so turning back just 16 days that was july 27th so i don't really care too much for that that's a quick turnaround but they may know what they're doing turning back 16 days but the subpar form and speed uh, i'm gonna pass uh didia a uh, very classy horse has not raced in a couple of months but uh ran a strong second in this new york grade one at a mile and a quarter, so roughly distance is uh, about the same. Uh, was a bit antsy in the gate, but did gain a little bit down the stretch, ran a 100 speed rating. So uh, the trainer doesn't have the greatest uh, stakes record, who is Ignacio Correas, but uh, Vincent uh, 
Shamanad is a is a hot jock the last seven days. Got four wins at Colonial. So uh, I like that. And uh, this one's going to be a strong contender, I do believe. So I'm uh, I'm definitely going to have this one on the radar uh, as a win contender. Gina Romantica, Chad Brown, automatic contender in my book, Flavian Pratt aboard. He's been off for six or been off for fifty six days. Was fourth in that Eaton Town, but that was uh, the first start of twenty twenty three. And then uh, Chad Brown gives him a uh, gives him a rest here. So gives her a rest. Excuse me. I, I hate when I do that. But uh, the rest, I think I still trust she will be fit. And I believe the stretch out uh, to three sixteenths will help. So I definitely like this one to contend. And uh, no, I'm, I'm uh, not really sweating it uh, being off just the one start and whatnot. So anyway, the last one up is uh, Rocky Star. And this is the other Chad Brown ridden by Tyler Gaffleone. All that stuff looks good and probably will get bet down to six to one. But this horse has not raced in more than eight months. So there's a theme going on here. Uh, so Chad Brown's bringing this one up. But keep in mind, this one is also entered for Friday in an optional, an allowance optional claimer at Saratoga. So that kind of tells me that he's not 100% sure she's ready to roll yet. So I'm going to pass. So basically what we're going to look at here is the big board again. Okay, looking at the big board here, I think what we're going to go after here, I'm already uh backing Fev Rover cuz I liked him. I liked her in in a previous start. So definite contender as I spoke of just a little bit ago, and I think Didia is definitely a win contender. Gina Romantica is the 6 horse. I believe that is my other win contender so i think maybe just boxing these three in in the exacta will get her done uh i don't know about going outside of that i may just box that three in a trifecta but what i'll probably do is go maybe three three and then like, like say do this uh what i have the one the five and the six right so we box those and then uncheck that. And then maybe down low, there might be uh, room for one of these other ones if, if I see or, see or hear of anything, because uh, that you can do whatever you want down here and you're still up to only $18. So that's going to do it for this race. And I think it's time to move on uh, to the Secretariat. So let's jump over there. And uh, we're going to get back up here to the top. Bear with me just a second. Silver Knight is who we're starting with. Trained by Charlie Appleby, written by Jamie Spencer. I will be backing this one as I did in the Belmont uh, grade one. Uh, ran a little bit different style. You can see it's it's more of the sustained closer type, but was up more like the early pressing type in this race. And I uh, don't know if that was just the Jock Mullen or the, the, the connections just trying to... Uh, get after it but uh, i like rail post is winning at 22 percent clip don't forget this is one mile on the inner turf so i think speed holds a little bit better on this inner turf uh at least from the races that i watched i watched two or three uh on uh on the uh, replays of the earlier in the week on inner turf so 42 percent trainer may improve fourth off the layoff shorter distance all that stuff looks good so silver knots going on top uh gigante Beaten by a weaker, poor speed, nothing over 90. Uh, I'm not uh, going to try to find anything here to root for. Was a nice third place finish in this lower level uh, stakes, but uh, no thanks. So Steve Asmussen trained, Javier Castellano aboard. I'll pass. Uh, Nagarok, Grand Motion, Flavian Pratt, I am in on. Uh, this one is... Let's see. Also good early pressing style combined with the speed. I like the 97, 98 in the last two outings with a win uh, moving progressively forward uh, to the G3. So this one uh, is a jump to G2. So I like that speed. Uh, the early pressing style should uh, have this one uh, ready for the stretch run. Failed his favorite last time. So maybe a bounce back is in order. Grand motion is a hot trainer. 
So we got that going on for us. Mustache is the next one. Uh, this is the only real front running early pace speed type horse that's going to get out and get after it. So one mile on the inner turf may improve at the shorter distance has been running at a mile and the 16th and been right there every time and just get got beat the last two outings uh, in the American turf G2 and then the American Derby over at Ellis. So uh, I like this horse. If if anybody can have a shot to wire the field here, it's this one. And from one of those races that I watched, uh, the, the horses that were like one, two uh, coming down the stretch were actually the ones that were seemed to be pulling away. So good chances for the pressing style rather than the closing style here. So I, I like this one. And then Northern Invader is trained by Sherry DeVoe, ridden by Johnny V. Velasquez. A nice eight-length victory, 94 speed, breaking its maiden in the third start of career. But this three-year-old is uh, is just not going to get there for me. So uh, I'm going to pass Major Dude. I, I mentioned in my preview video, this one, I didn't feel like Ortiz was getting after him down the stretch as much. So hence the the weaker rating, Manila, Manila G3 lost to uh, another horse in this race we'll talk about in a minute. But Todd Pletcher trains, Tyler Gaffleone is in the saddle. I like Gaffleone on the turf. He uh, he seems to really, really ha be in tune with what needs to be done. So early pressing style, I think Major Dude's in for a big bounce back. So it's definitely on my contenders list. And number seven, more than looks, was the one that actually beat uh, both, I believe, what was it, Negronic and Major Dude. So this one is an interesting one. Upset winner, 99 speed rating, best turf speed, high ratings, all that stuff. Sherry DeVoe trained, ridden by Jose Lescano. And uh, the speed is the tops, and the progression shows Proper improvement, you know, jumping up in money, winning races, won a G3 up to a G2. So if uh, if he can perform here, it's on. Uh, so I've definitely got that one in the mix. And then number eight, the last one, T at one, is Diane Morrissey and uh, Michael Sanchez riding sharp furlong, uh, four furlong workout, but not really anything in the in the history that suggests to me that this one can step up in class beaten by weaker in the last race, although it was just a second place and uh, led and then hung down the stretch at a mile and three eighths. So a cut back in distance would, would seem logical and uh, it could be an upset, but I'm going to pass. Uh, so looking somewhere else now getting up here, let's reset us back. And so basically what I look, what I looked at was five horses uh, number one, Silver Knot. Number three, Nagarok. Number four, Mustache. Number six, Major Dude. And number seven, More Than Looks. And so five horses in an eight-horse field, you got to take some stands. So probably what I'll do is I'll probably go one, three, and six box and call it a day on that one. And then maybe if I do a try, I'm going to do... Let's see, one, three, six, and then we'll probably add in the four and the, or let's see, four and the seven, I believe. So we can go four, seven, and that's just going to be $18 for the try, and then hopefully we get somebody at some long odds in there. For once, I've been spreading out on these races, spending three to six extra dollars on exactas and whatnot, and uh then getting chalk to come in and either breaking even or losing money. So hopefully next time around we get the good end of the stick and we uh we get that 15 to 25 to 1 or something like that that hits the board and crashes the exacta and we get a little money out of it. So until the next video, appreciate everybody watching. Stay tuned for more lot of mower. So uh see you soon and thank you for watching.